seem sure you've done a good job, don't you? Reckons you'll be finished for dinner time. Yeah. You still like the colours? Yeah, of course I do. You don't sound so sure. Kevin, I love it. Yeah, I'm glad when he's gone. I don't like having strangers in the house. Oh, I know what you mean, sweetie. I mean, Alex, nice enough guy, but it'd be nice to have this place to yourself again, won't it? So, you're all ready for your drunken night of debauchery? Your end night? I wasn't planning on doing anything. Why are you doing something? Oh, I thought I might. You know, nothing major, just a few pints with the lads, eh? <laughs> What's debauchery? Oh, it's nothing, sweetheart. It's just his chance to have a bit of fun. Oh, and your mum, to celebrate last night of freedom. All I'm saying is it might not be as bad as it looks. If it disappears into the night, doesn't say where, doesn't say why, what do you think he's done? Run away and join the flipping circus. But why would he want to go and do a runner? Well, why do people usually do a runner? Because they've got something to hide. Look, I, I, I can't prove it here, but I think... I think Vic's been helping himself to the company's money. But, I mean, do you really think that he would? All I know is that he's got a gambling habit. He's got to be funding it somehow. So, uh, what's the damage? Uh, there's something funny in here. I just can't work out what he's done. Well, I, I can't believe he'd do that to us. I mean, he's a bright lad. He's got his own company. He's got a good future. Why would he want to go and flush it down the toilet? Well, they say it's an addiction, don't they? And what do addicts do? They steal. They lie. Will you give over? You didn't fancy me. Of course he did! I must have looked right. Stay rolling around in gutter with me chips. <laughs> Still, at least you had your knickers on the way. <laughs> oh, are you? Sorry, I wasn't listening. No, you're all right, don't worry. Yeah, there's no point trying to keep a secret around here, love. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't going to bother with a hen night, but Kevin said I should do something. Of course you should. Any excuse for a party. So what's the plan? Well, nothing fancy. Just a few drinks at our place about 8 o'clock Friday. Right. I'm looking forward to it. I better get these to that Norris, cos if he doesn't have his cup of Earl Grey of a morning, he's like a rabid dog. <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> Believe me, you wouldn't. Oh, Rita, before you go, I wanted to ask you something. Mm. Would you mind being a witness at our wedding? Well, of course I wouldn't mind. In fact, the pleasure would be all mine, Sally. Hey, make sure you ask Gail. We want a good turnout Friday. Hi, Gail. Hi. What's all this? My hen night on Friday. That's if you'd like to come. I'd love to, Sal. Why wouldn't I? Well, I know you had reservations about me and Kevin. Yes, I did. But at the end, it's what you want, isn't it? And if remarrying Kevin makes you happy... So? You all right? <laughs> yeah, it's just there's still so much to do. Yeah, well, that's weddings, isn't it? <laughs> Me and Richard felt the same, but it was worth it in the end. Oh, isn't that your decorator? It must be nearly finished, isn't it? It's his last day today. Right, you two go ahead, make a start, OK? Have a quick word with Curly. Ah, oh, what have I done now? Nothing, mate. I just want to uh, make sure you bring the pen at the wedding. Why? Well, I want you to be my witness. Me? Are you sure? Well, you can write, can't you? Listen, mate, as far as I'm concerned, you're the only person I've ever thought about asking. Two teas, please. Toya and Eileen wants a sticky bun. Right, that's uh, 180 then. Hey, uh, and don't forget you owe me as well. What? Your account at the garage. That check that gave me bounced all the way down the street. I've just got to touch up this paintwork and then I'm done. Right, well, I just have to nip into town for a few bits for the wedding. I'll probably be gone by the time you get back. OK. Well, thanks for everything. Sally, why don't we meet up this afternoon? I can't. It's complicated. But I thought you wanted to spend some time together before I left. I do. I really want to, but I can't. I can't do this. Why not? Because I feel sick. I feel trapped. I can't bear it. I can't bear the thought that I'm never going to see you again. Then come out with me this afternoon. Please, Sally. I can't. So that's it? We just pretend that the last few weeks haven't happened? We have to. I go back to stripping wallpaper and you... And I concentrate on getting married because it's happening, all right? I know that, Sally. I'm not trying to stop you. Aren't you? I just want to talk. I don't want this to be... goodbye. Well, it has to be. I'm sorry. 
Can you leave it? She's doing her best. Well, it's ridiculous, though, isn't it? I mean, what do you think it is? Some kind of competition. See who sold the slowest. Keep <laughs> all. Don't mind, Carol. Oh, don't worry, love. I've had worse than that, believe me. Well, anyway, you'll speed up. I know. Look, I don't suppose there's any chance of me stopping behind tonight. Get a bit practicing without rent a gob watching me every move. Yeah, of course. Well, tell you what, why don't I stop with you? I might be able to give you a few tips. Oh, cheers. Um, listen, Angela, maybe you should come for a drink with us. Give you a chance to get to know girls a bit. No, I'll just uh, stop at home for me dinner. No offence, love, but some of the company around here might just put me off my sarnies. See ya. OK. See you later. We didn't think we'd see you today, did we? Just thought I'd spin by, see me favourite boys. Hey, listen, I was thinking, should we invite Mick Mouth for dinner on Sunday? On Sunday? Yeah, why not? What's the matter? Well, you've seen an awful lot of him, aren't you? Don't you see enough of him at work? I thought you liked him. And I mean, normally could do with the company at the minute. <sighs> yeah, all right, OK, ask him. Is the yours smoke that good? I thought I'd have to get some of my own. Want one? Do you mind? <gasps> Blimey, it's him. It's you, isn't it? Well, it was last time I looked, yeah. So what, do you know each other? Sort of. That's that bloke from last night, the one I was telling you about. I can't believe it. You're a copper. Well, uh, either that or he's uh, got a thing for dressing up. <laughs> I'm, I'm parched. Come for a pint? Yeah, me too. Right, you better watch him, Jan. You know what they say about coppers? He's right, you know, it's all true. Well, I uh, suppose I'd better be getting back to work. Yeah, I've got a pint waiting for me over there. There you go. Surely we can think of somewhere better than this place to go on Friday night. Hey, what's wrong with the Rovers? Thank you very much. Yeah, but not for the stag day. Hey, it's hardly... Hardly what? Well, conducive. Oh, I'm sorry. So I suppose you want some cheap, tacky flesh pot with wall-to-wall -wall strippers, do you? <laughs> That'll do. You've got the addresses. <laughs> hey, look, you're forgetting the one big advantage this place has got over going into town. And what's what? that? We can get as drunk as we want and still find our way home. Fizz, I'm not having a go. I'm just saying, whoever finishes the milk should buy some more. Uh, how's your other flat, mate? How's her nan? What? Maria's grandma. She's poorly, isn't she? That's why she has to go and look after her. No, Maria's in the Caribbean with Vic. She's what? Yeah, I know, it's mad, isn't it? He just asked her out of the blue. I said to her, I said, I wish um, someone had whisked me up like that. Here in the straight, Vic's gone to the Caribbean. Yeah. With Maria? Oh, no, actually, I could have made a mistake. It's all right, Fizz. You don't have to lie for her. <sighs> Janice, just do watch me paint a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to go and see Steve. About time someone told my husband what's going on. Sally? Sally? Are you all right? Please don't. I just... Wanted to say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put any more pressure on you. Uh, yeah, well, don't, because I'm undoing up as it is. It's doing me head in. What is? What is this? A wedding. From where I go, it's all people talk about. Stag nights and hen nights and... Kevin's so excited about it. I just want to be with you. <laughs> and every part of me is telling me not to do this. It's telling me not to get any more involved with you. And this morning I was determined that I wasn't going to speak to you again. And is that what you want? You know I don't. I can't bear the fact that I'm never going to see you again. I have to go. The job's finished. Can't you find something else to do? To paint? Tell it. I've already given everything a second go. Even I can't paint any slower. <laughs> Come on. Let's go to the park. We haven't got much time left. Please, Sally.
Well, I'll give you three guesses where he is and I'll tell you something now. He ain't in flaming Blackpool. Shh. What's going on? Yeah, that's right. No, I haven't withdrawn any money all week. Who's he on the phone to now? The bank. Trying to see if Vic's taken anything. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll let you know as soon as I find out. Cheers. Baby, did you hear, mate? He's on holiday. He's took Maria to the Caribbean. The Caribbean? There's no point asking where he got the money for the tickets. So it's true, then? He really has been dipping his hand in the till? Oh, yeah. Says it's not just petty cash. Vic's taken £2,000 from the company account and he never paid the rent money in, so that's another 800 quid gone. What? Thieving little to... Yeah, all right, Karen. No, it isn't all right, Eileen, because this is our flaming profit. I mean, it's our livelihood. Yeah, this is my wages and all, so what are you going to do about it? Well, what can I do? I can't follow him out there, shake money out of his pockets. I can't believe he's done this to me. <laughs> what? I was just thinking, what must we look like standing here? It's like one of them book covers, isn't it? What <laughs> books? You know, those sloppy romantic books my mum used to read them. She used to get a stack of them from the library. And on the cover there was always some doctor. My bleeding heart. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. What, don't you approve? Uh, no, it's not that, it's just... Even when I was little, I used to think there was something a bit sad, a bit pathetic about them. There's no harm in them, is there? They make people feel better. Yeah, but do they, though? Or do they just give them unrealistic expectations? What do you mean? Well, those books tell you that no matter how bad things get, don't worry. Because one day, some big, dark, handsome stranger's gonna come along and ride you off to happiness on his horse. And what's wrong with that? Well, life's not like that, is it? Isn't it? I mean, I know it's a decorator's van instead of a horse, but in the end I thought, well, you know, they're screaming. <laughs> I'm gonna miss this. Getting cold in a park. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know. It's daft, isn't it? We hardly know each other, yet it's so... Easy. Yeah. You know, I can go for days, weeks, without having a real conversation. It's not as if Kevin doesn't care about me, because I know he does. He's always supportive. It's just... He doesn't see me like you do. How's that? Oh, I don't know. You know, not just as a as a good mum or somebody who does the ironing or tidies the girls' bedrooms. We see through all that. Do you talk to Kevin? Yeah, I talk to him. I talk to him about bills and beans and school shoes. The stuff of life. The stuff of my life. I just always thought there'd be something more. Off. Yeah, me and all. I'm not going to spend another minute in this place. You quick up. Oh, I'd say, right, I want to break this pint. Are you coming, Ella? Uh, no, no, thanks, Janice. I'm going to stop behind for a bit with Angela. Why is she keen? Oh, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Right. Thanks for staying late. Oh, it's no problem. Anyway, I was watching you earlier on and you were getting better all the time. You don't have to say that. It's true. Look where are you going at that end now? Oh! Oh! Oh, it's gone in my finger. Oh, oh, hang on a sec, hang on. Oh, oh no, no, it hurts. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, I'm going to take you to the hospital. No, no, I don't want to go to the hospital. I'll be all right. Look, I can put a dressing on it for now, but you're going to have to get it seen by a doctor. If that gets infected, Hayley, honestly, I'm fine. But look at you. Hayley. Listen to me, I'm telling you, I do not want to go to the hospital. Well, you're going to have to. You might need a tetanus injection. <sighs> Look, don't worry, I'll stop with you. I'm going to go and call us a taxi. <sighs> it's not that often we have someone round for dinner, so I want to make the effort. Right. Sunday rolls, mate, can't beat it. Oh, Yorkshire yeah. pudding, proper gravy. Right. That's what I always do when we have guests. I want to do something different. Then why don't you make a curry? Hey, yeah, yeah, they do some good ones now, you know. All you have to do is add a jar of sauce. No, I'm talking proper curry here. Fresh spices, ginger, garlic, coriander. Mm -hmm. Sounds complicated. Yeah, that's a good idea, cos coppers like curry. And there was me thinking you were a real man. <laughs> I am a real man. Then prove it. Put a bit of passion in your cooking, mm -hmm. a bit of fire in your belly. <laughs> it will do if you make some of vindaloo. <laughs> <laughs> if you're frightened of chilli, you're frightened of life. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'll make a curry. Then I'll get you a recipe. You're on. 
Excuse me, girls. Uh, is our Angela working late? It's just that she's not home yet. Yeah, she's stopping behind. She's not on her own, is she? No, no, she's with Ailey. That's our supervisor. She is. Blimey, who a cow. Keeps her on a tight lead, doesn't they? Yeah, no wonder she's so flaming jumpy. Well, we'll take a break now. <sighs> Where's me mum? I'm starving. I told you, I don't know. Go make yourself a butty. I don't want a butty. I had sandwiches at dinner time. Hey, Dad. Where's your mum? Oh, don't you start at all. No, I'm serious. Yes. Has she rang? Left the note or not? No. What's going on? I don't know. I've just been down the pub and one of the women says she's working late. Then you can stop panicking, can't you? Yeah, but I've just been down the factory and there's no one there. Place is locked up. I can't believe this. I've checked everywhere. I don't know where she could be. Dad, is everything all right? I don't know, son. Yeah, yeah, everything's going to be fine. But what if something's happened to her? She's probably just down the shops, lost track of time. You know what your mum's like. Yeah, but we always said we'd tell each other when Look, we I'm go... sure there's nothing to worry about. Why don't you do something useful and put the kettle on, eh? Dad. If she's not back by seven, I'm ringing the coppers. I can't believe it's got so late. I know. I hope Kevin's not getting worried. Where will you say you've been? Beside a lake, in a park. Sharing my most intimate secrets with a strange man. Sounds convincing to me. <laughs> so, are you ready to go home? Just a couple more minutes. Oh, what are you going to say to him? I don't know, but I can't just sit... Sorry, I'm late, love. Hi, darling. Angela, where the hell have you been? What are you done to your hand? It's nothing, honestly. Look, everyone just calm down. I just had a little accident at work. I had to go to casualty. What kind of accident? What did you do? Nothing. I've just been a dope with a sewing machine, stitched my finger instead of a pair of knickers. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't call you, but pay phone at the hospital were broke. But I'm all right, honestly. Have you had your tea? Katie did some chips in the microwave. Yeah, they were well rank. Couldn't eat them. <sighs> right, here you are, then. You two pop down the chippy. Reckon we could all do with a decent supper. Brandy, please, sir. Coming up. Surprised you show your face in here, sort of family you've got. Yeah? What's she talking about? I'm talking about the lying, thieving Torag that you call a cousin. What, you heard from Vic? <laughs> Not exactly from him, no. Uh, what about him? You see, apparently, he's gone on holiday with his girlfriend. What do you mean, holiday? Oh, yeah. Well, you've got to give him initiative. I mean, first of all, he takes nearly three grand from the company and then takes Maria off to the Caribbean. I mean, it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> so, so I knew he was up to something, but... Well, you got that right, then. Uh, yeah, if I'm going to be honest, I'm uh, a little bit relieved. Relieved? And how would you work that out? Well, I'm relieved that Vikram hasn't disappeared. I'm relieved he isn't dead in a ditch somewhere. And all right, well, obviously, he's made some kind of mistake, but you can't say, I didn't warn you. <laughs> I'm sorry. But is this some kind of excuse? No. That is no excuse, mate, because there isn't one for him. But at least you know where he is and that he's coming back. And you, my friend, can sort it out. If he's coming back, Dev. If. It's not my problem. I didn't know what to think. I was imagining all kinds of stuff. Well, you don't have to, because I'm here and I'm all right. You know, I think we'll be used to this by now. To what? The unexpected. People do get ill. People are late. I was sat there in the hospital tonight watching it all. Walking wounded, doctors and nurses patching folk up, sending them home. So what's this got to do with us? Well, I'm just saying that we can't go on expecting the worst. Because it's not just us, is it? And if you look at it like that, everyone's got problems. I'm sick. I'm so sick and tired of being scared all the time. I don't want to live like that, and I don't want you to. Or the kids. So what are you saying? What I'm saying is... that all this is our new start. And we've got to make it work. And I'm going to really try, and do you know what, Tommy? I'm going to really try not to be scared anymore. 
So where will you be this time next week? Grimsby. The gaffer's got us some big conversion. What about you? What do you mean? Well, isn't Kevin whisking you off somewhere exotic on your honeymoon? Don't be daft. Why is that daft? You're getting married, isn't that what people do? Because it's not that sort of wedding. Better be getting back. Kevin will be wondering where I've got to. All right. So, Alex, don't make this harder than it is. But if I don't say it, if I don't at least try... It's too late. I know that your life is complicated and I know that this is probably the last thing that you want to hear. Then don't say it. I love you. But you don't even know me. I know enough. I know how I feel. I mean, listen to me, do you think I can talk like this to any other woman? I don't know. You do, Sally. I know you do because you feel the same. And I don't know what it's called or whether it's love at first sight or head over heels. But how often do you think this comes along, eh? That two people, two strangers can have this from nothing. The strength of it, it's incredible. I look at Kevin sometimes and I can hardly speak to him. I feel so jealous. You don't mean that. I do. Because he's got you and I haven't. Every time he touches you, Every time I think about the two of you together, that time when I saw you in your wedding outfit, I felt sick to my stomach. Don't say that because there's nothing I can do. Sally, this is our last chance. 